Edmund Wilson's essay Marxism and Literature presents a comprehensive study on the influence of Marxism on art, literature and literary criticism. The essay provides a very systematic analysis supported by many examples demonstrating that art and literature should not be used only as tools for social economic and political agenda the essay explores the importance of literature within marxian framework and delves into the diverse perspectives of various marxist philosophers and thinkers marx and engels assigned a significant role to literature and art within the system of dialectical materialism though this role was more complex than often assumed they viewed the forms of human society as emerging from the prevailing methods of production and the social relations of a particular time and place from these social forms a superstructure of higher activities including literature and art arose However, these activities were not solely determined by economics. They demonstrated the influence of the social configuration, but also aimed to establish themselves as professional domains with their own standards and disciplines transcending class boundaries. Marx and Engels acknowledged that literature and art interacted with the economic base and with each other while the economic situation was not the only cause there existed a reciprocal interaction within a fundamental economic necessity the art of a great artistic period could reach a level of vitality and vision where it could profoundly impact the life of that period even down to its economic foundations however for art to flourish it had to detach itself from the social system that had nurtured it but providing artists with training and leisure even if the artists themselves might work towards the destruction of that system marx and engels did not seek to provide social economic formulas to assess the validity of works of art they approached imaginative works based on their artistic merits they could appreciate art for its artistic qualities and were not inclined to judge literature only in terms of its political tendencies engels in particular warned against tendentious literature and believed that the poet should not explicitly formulate the tendency but rather let it arise naturally from the situation and action depicted marx and engels had a genuine appreciation for various literary figures they admired goethe and considered him a colossal and universal genius though they acknowledged his flaws they held deep admiration for aeschylus and shakespeare quoting the latter extensively they recognized the power of literature to move and affect them emotionally marx's daughter noted that he loved hein both as a person and his work showing indulgence towards hein's political shortcomings marx and engels did not attempt to systematically explain the relationship between art and social arrangements as marx even suggested that certain periods of art's highest development stood outside direct connections with society's general development while marx and engels appreciated literature and art for their artistic qualities with lenin a more specialized marxist format emerged lenin had a fondness for music and appreciated fiction poetry and theater however he recognized the emotional impact of music and expressed reservations about its influence lenin was not doctrinaire in his literary taste and admired writers like tolstoy recognizing his genius while analyzing his non-resistance and mysticism 
from the perspective of the patriarchal peasantry. Lenin also valued Gorky, a journalist supportive of the Bolsheviks, and encouraged his writing, much like Marx's indulgence of Heine's political shortcomings. Trotsky, unlike Lenin, was a literary man, and in 1924 he published a notable study called Literature and Revolution. In this book, he addressed the problems that Russian writers faced in the new society of the revolution. One question he tackled was the carryover value of literature, a term used by James T. Farrell in his book A Note on Literary Criticism. Marx and Engels had not extensively explored the value of literature beyond their admiration for Shakespeare and the Greeks. However, Russian writers now question the value of literature and art from past ages of barbarism and oppression in the context of socialist freedom. They wondered about the status of bourgeois culture and its scars in the dawn of socialism. Would there be a new proletarian literature with its own language, style and form to express the emotions and ideas of the new proletarian dictatorship? In Russia, a group called the Prolet Cult sought to monopolize control over Soviet literature. Lenin, however, opposed this and emphasized that proletarian culture could not be created artificially or dictated by official policy. He believed that proletarian culture would evolve naturally as a development of the knowledge reserves accumulated under capitalist oppression. In Literature and Revolution, Trotsky cautioned against compressing the culture of the future into the narrow limits of the present. He observed how the social economic crises influenced the representation of life in novels, the emotions and imagery in poetry, and the standards set by critics. Trotsky did not advocate for a proletarian culture that would replace bourgeois culture. Instead, he argued that the new socialist literature would directly emerge from the literature already produced during the dominance of the bourgeoisie. He stated that communism did not yet have an artistic culture, it only had a political culture. While Trotsky's perspective appears reasonable, it reflects a situation that may seem alien to those not accustomed to government control over literature and art or the identification of literary and artistic movements with the government. After the revolution, various cultural groups in Russia sought to dominate literature, sometimes with the government's authority and sometimes without it. Even while combating these tendencies, Trotsky found himself passing judgment and expressing opinions. Some sympathizers of the Soviet regime believed that this state of affairs was necessary for the realization of socialism, although it led to abuses. Under the Tsar, literature in Russia played a unique role, as political and social criticism had to be incorporated into imagery of fiction due to censorship. This contributed to the greatness of the Russian theatre and the novel during the 19th century. However, after the revolution, the intelligentsia came to power and the identification of literature with politics became problematic. While Lenin and Trotsky sincerely aimed to maintain literary freedom, they also recognized the potential for art as a propaganda tool. The administration of Stalin, lacking literary and cultural sensibilities, increasingly relied on literature as a means of manipulating a largely illiterate population. This stifled the development of a living literature. And under Stalin's dictatorship, political questions were inseparable from the fate of society. The situation in Russia resulted in the suppression of political criticism and artistic freedom became limited to purely aesthetic concerns. The deliberate falsification of social and political history that started during the Stalin-Trotsky crisis continued to escalate 
corrupting intellectual life and forcing those who value truth and clarity to remain silent the practice of distorting history changing narratives and repressing dissenting voices ultimately erodes every aspect of intellectual life this oppressive environment undermines serious and humane perspectives leaving few alternatives for those who wish to express themselves freely the artistic field along with the political sphere descends into a nightmarish state of surveillance and repression the death of gorky along with the imprisonment of bukharin and radek removed the last restraints paving the way for further deterioration in both artistic and political realms the practice of deliberate falsification of history combined with the government's control over intellectual life eventually corrupts every department of thought and compels those who value truth and clarity to choose silence it is important to note that these observations reflect the specific historical context of russia after the revolution and under stalin's regime they may seem unfamiliar to those accustomed to different cultural and political environments where government control over literature and art is less prevalent marxism in russia has found itself in a blind alley or rather it has been suppressed it indicates a loss of marxist political culture depriving us of both its authority and inspiration therefore it is necessary to draw our conclusions about marxism and literature based not only on the texts of marx's fathers but also on common sense first and foremost marxism alone cannot determine the artistic value of a work a person may be dedicated marxist but lack imagination and taste making it difficult to distinguish between a good and an inferior book that are both ideologically sound however marxism can shed light on the origins and social significance of works of art the study of literature in relation to society is not a new concept with thinkers like herder vico and coleridge providing insights into the connection between literary and social phenomena Marx and Engels deepened this study by emphasizing the importance of economic systems. Moreover, their capacity for literary appreciation adds weight to their views on literature. Nevertheless, applying Marx's principles without a genuine understanding of literature can lead to severe misunderstandings. In works of the highest caliber, the message is not a simple moral but a complex vision that is often implicit rather than explicit readers who approach literature solely for its social morals will inevitably be confused moreover the explicit moral drawn by an author may contradict or having nothing to do with work's true purpose engels for instance recognized the value of balzac's works despite the author's reactionary opinions Engels noted that Balzac's portrayal of aristocrats whom he sympathized with was marked by biting irony and satire. Balzac also expressed genuine admiration for his republican adversaries who represented the popular masses. Therefore a work's significance does not solely rely on whether it illustrates larger social conflicts or engages in trivial conflicts. In art There exists a moral interchangeability that allows readers to transpose actions and sentiments into their own experiences. Moreover, the moral effect of a work of literature does not necessarily hinge on whether the forces of virtue and bravery triumph or defeated. Hemingway's The Undefeated, for example, features a hero who is ultimately humiliated and killed however his courage remains a victory in itself the impact of literary work goes beyond specific political outcomes critics on the left who lack literary competence often use invalid 
test to judge works of literature. They frequently attempt to create specific formulas and blueprints for constructing ideal Marxist books, but these efforts are futile. The rules observed in any school of art become apparent only after the actual works of art have been produced. Attempts to legislate masterpieces into existence, such as the Soviet doctrine of socialist realism, are indicative of sterility and tend to discourage the production of good literature. In other words, Marxism alone cannot determine the artistic value of a literature. While it provides insights into the social significance of literature, it is essential to approach literature with an understanding of its complexity and artistic vision. Attempting to measure literature against predetermined formulas or blueprints is counterproductive. Instead, we must appreciate literature as a creative and imaginative endeavor, recognizing the importance of individual talent and artistic expression. The assumption of the left that revolutionary or pre-revolutionary periods are favorable for producing new and vital forms of literature is far from the truth. During periods of actual revolution, writers often lack the leisure and stability required for the development of highly refined literary forms. The literature of the French Revolution, for example, consisted primarily of political orations and journalistic writings, while the literature of the Russian Revolution was dominated by the political writings of Lenin and Trotsky. The conditions of revolution do not typically foster the creation of masterpieces. In pre-revolutionary periods where new forces are fermenting, there can be great periods for literature such as the 18th century in France and the 19th century in Russia. However, the conditions that give rise to masterpieces are not necessarily the result of impending revolutions, but rather the culmination of highly developed literary techniques in the hands of writers supported by long enduring institutions. While these writers may reflect an age of transition, it does not necessarily mean that their work aligns directly with their future. Writers like Dante and Virgil, who embodied the germs of the Renaissance and the longing for a better world, cannot be described as revolutionary in the true sense. They represent passing ages and write elegies for them. The highest creative works of art do not necessarily emerge during the most active moments of social change. Regarding proletarian literature, as an accompaniment to the social revolution, the emphasis on it in Soviet Russia stemmed from the difficulty experienced by the educated minority, who constituted only about 20% of the population, in communicating with the illiterate majority. In contrast, the United States faced a different situation, with only around 4% illiteracy and relatively little difficulty in communication between different social groups. America had already developed a literature of the common man's escape from feudal Europe and bourgeois society during its pioneering period. The country had produced works like Leaves of Grass and Huckleberry Finn, demonstrating its ability to express the dignity and importance of the ordinary man without needing lessons from Russia. Andre Malra, for instance, embodies the union of creative political action and imaginative writing, alternating between attempts to write long-range fiction on revolutionary themes and engaging in aviation exploits for the cause of revolution. This convergence arises from the same vision of history and is encompassed within the career of one individual. The Marxist vision of society becoming a work of art under communism, as mentioned by Trotsky, implies that the first attempts at this art will be inexpert and will work with refractory material. 
the marxist dialectic involves idealistic and mythological elements that have sometimes led to social religion rather than social art however the human imagination has already begun to conceive the possibility of recreating human society as it gains power it will transcend the revolutionary underground of art as we know it and explore unimaginable ways of dealing with materials of actual life this highlights the notion that literature itself is not the ultimate goal but rather the first efforts of the human spirit to transcend literature itself